All right, so let's have a look at the energy in chemical reactions. So over here, we can see two parts of our, of our equation. So what you could do is you could draw a little goes to symbol there. And on the one side of our reaction, we've got reactants. And on the other side, you've got products. So this is reactants goes to products. And what you see, the energy level on the reactant side in this case is much higher than it is on the product side. If, however, it was like this, that would still work. And this is our product side as well. We would see that there'd be more products, more energy in the products than there are in the reactants. But what we see is that it requires this, this thing called activation energy. And the activation energy is the input required to take things from a stable setting, which is what your um, molecules and atoms are usually at to start off with, what it takes to take them from a stable setting to make them unstable so they'll react, and then it'll end up where they end up. For example, when chemicals break their bonds, or their internal bonds, so intramolecular bonds, um, when they react, they're breaking intramolecular bonds and then reforming new bonds in a different substance, as a different substance. And this requires energy, and that's the activation energy over here. So the energy, we call that the activation energy. Yep, sweet. And the energy can be heat, light, or electrical energy. And there's probably other types as well, but those are the ones we're going to talk about. Um, a good example is the electrolysis of water. So if we've got water here, if we add electrical energy, what will happen is you will break apart all the bonds. So you've got the, you'll break apart these bonds here. These bonds will break apart and then they'll reform to make hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Um, another example is the, the reaction, the action of a silver halide or of light on a silver halide. So a halide being a halogen, so silver halide, silver chloride. That's it here. We add light and that decomposes it into the ions silver and chlorine or chloride ions. Um, now, the reason it does this is something called bond energies. So basically, chemical energy is released when bonds are formed. So what that means is to break bonds, chemical energy needs to be absorbed. So when new bonds are formed, chemical energy is released. To break those bonds, you need to insert energy. And there's a reason. When atoms are over here unbonded to anything, they have a high potential energy. So they're ready to react. Like they're just, they're ready to do something. They're storing energy. But then that's unstable. It's untenable. So they will go down an energy level. And they'll go down an energy level by bonding. As, as they bond, energy light, in this case light or heat or electricity, can be released. Um, so they move from a high potential energy to a low potential energy. And if you want to break this apart, you need to insert the energy the other way. So bond it in, and then it will split apart, and it'll eventually it'll re come back and re rebond with something else or itself. So the more attracted two particles are together, so water is a good example. The hydrogen and oxygen are very well attracted. So the more attracted two particles are together, the more energy is released when they break the bond. Sorry, when they when they bond. So when oxygen and water, hydrogen combine, lots of energy is released. Or, alternatively, the more energy, heat or light, is required to separate them. Okay, so if something is very attracted, um, they will take lots of energy to break them apart, or they'll release lots of energy when they go together. All right, I hope that made sense. Uh, if you have any questions, ask them in the comments below, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye now.